Two heads are better than one. That's true for humans, but also for computers. If we want to connect two computers to each other, we can use a network cable, such as the UTP cable, the unshielded twisted pair, or we can do it using wireless through Wi-Fi technology. Which option we will choose depends on the network card of our computer. This card can provide a UTP connection or wireless mobility, or both. Linking multiple computers together is called a network. To create said network, we will need a device that links all these computers together. Some sort of digital crossroads, so to speak. That device is what we call a switch. You can mostly recognize it by a great many of UTP connections. Because we also want to connect our tablets and smartphones to our network, that do not have a built-in UTP connection, most switches can also connect to Wi-Fi. This type of network is called a LAN, a Local Area Network. It's local because all the devices are close to one another. For instance, your home network, or the network at your school, or the network in a business. The computers can only connect to each other. The purest form of LAN, with only a switch and a lot of computers, can't connect to the internet. LANs offer a lot of possibilities. You can connect a printer to the network that can be used by all computers. Or you could add a server. A server can be used as storage. All files are kept on the server. If people work on the other computers in the network, the so-called clients, they get their files from the server and send them back to the server once they are done. That type of server is called a file server. You can also use a server to control the network printer. Print jobs from the clients will not go directly to the printer, but have to pass through the server, called a print server. Connections to the internet also tend to pass through a server. That server regulates data usage and usually has a big sturdy firewall. That's what we call an internet server. Some companies like to receive their mails locally, on their own company server. Those servers are called mail servers, although that service has mainly shifted towards cloud services. And last but not least, you can also host your own website locally, instead of through a hosting company. Of course, you will need a web server for that. There are a lot of different ways to construct a LAN. There's a slightly different LAN for every possible situation. If we want to, we can connect multiple LANs to each other. We will be needing another device to do so. A device that prepares the route between the switches. Therefore, that device is called a router. Combining multiple local networks or LANs will lead to a bigger network with a wider range. A WAN or wide area network. At this moment, we're still not connected to the internet. We are connected locally to all the other devices in our home and we're in the same wide area network with, for instance, some of the neighbors. To connect to the internet, we need a third device, a modem. A modem transforms the signals from our UTP cables or Wi-Fi waves to signals that can be sent through telephone lines or TV cables. That way, your signals can reach almost any place on Earth. Because most people need a switch, a router and a modem, their functions, creating a LAN, connecting to a WAN and gaining access to telephone or TV cables, are nearly always combined into one device that can do it all. You often rent or buy this all-in-one device from the company that provides you with access to the internet. That's it for this video. Please check out the other videos on this channel and don't forget to subscribe.